Welcome back, man. This is fun. Uh, our tasting rooms are open again, and uh, things have been busy here. We've been uh, having a lot of visitors. It's great to uh, be seeing all of you back here at the winery. Um, as you can guess, things are a little different in how we go about the tasting, but uh, uh, we're coping and everybody seems to be having fun and uh, it's all working. So we're glad to have you all back in town. So uh, for those of you, if you haven't had a chance yet, look so forward to seeing you here at the winery again. So. Uh, today we're going to be tasting three of our Chardonnays. Uh, we're going to start off with our 2015 Reserve Helix Chardonnay. Uh, then we're going to move on to our 2018 Reserve CPR Chardonnay. And then we'll finish up with our uh, 2019 uh, Helix Chardonnay. All of them are actually uh, uh, from the same vineyard, from Stillwater Creek Vineyard. And uh, so it'll be a real fun comparison and they're made in little different styles too. So it's going to be a fun, fun tasting for us all here. Um, just, you know, a few words on uh, Chardonnay in general. Um, you know, it's a really, really delicate grape. Uh, a lot of people say it's a neutral grape. I don't think it's a neutral grape. I think it has wonderful uh, character, plenty of a character, especially the clone that we use. We're uh, uh, using Dijon clone uh, 95, uh, again from Stillwater Creek Vineyard, and the Dijon 95, Dijon has a little bit more concentrated fruit to it, um, but uh, Chardonnay in general has really uh, subtle and uh, light aromatics to it and it's a very malleable grape in the sense that um, we can easily impart flavors to it and uh, in which case the, oftentimes the Chardonnay itself the grape character actually gets lost within the the flavors uh, that we impart and the main flavors that I'm talking about are through malolactic fermentation uh, which will uh, has a tendency to soften the wine, reduce the acidity a little bit. It's a secondary uh, bacterial fermentation after the primary sugar fermentation. And it just, malolactic changes malic acid uh, from um, malic acid to lactic acid. Malic acid is the main flavor component in green apples. Um, and uh, so oftentimes when we're fermenting it, not only just the Chardonnay, but any uh, vinifero grape, uh, oftentimes it will uh, get the smell of uh, green apples through the fermentation because we can smell that uh, um, that malic acid in the grape. It's the second largest acid constituent in the nephra grapes. So um, after the primary fermentation, again, that's the sugar fermentation and the sugars have uh, all been converted to alcohol. We ferment our wines uh, for the most part dry here. Then we'll put it through the malolactic fermentation. And again, that's malolactic bacteria, which will convert the malic acid to lactic acid. And the lactic acid is um, more that uh, the buttery, creamy aspects uh, in Chardonnay. That's where that comes from. Uh, lactic acid is the main acid in, in dairy products. So. Um, but uh, Stillwater Creek is a great vineyard uh, to be growing this fruit at. Um, the history of Chardonnay, uh, you know, goes back uh, to the Roman times. It's uh, really, you see uh, Davis uh, did some DNA testing and they determined that it's actually a cross between uh, two grapes, uh, Pinot Noir, which is actually a white grape. Many of you know uh, Oregon's famous for it in Burgundy. Um, but a real esoteric grape, gosh, I hope I pronounce it right, Gouillet Blanc, it's G-O-U-A-I-S. My French isn't that great, uh, but uh, I don't know, actually, maybe it's, the grape itself actually is believed to originate from Croatia, but it's crossed between those two grapes, and the uh, thing about Chardonnay is that it, um, is a very consistent grape. Um, it does have can have quite a bit of vigor to it. And um, so therefore um, uh, it's well suited for many different uh, climates and wine growing regions uh, because it does have that, that vigor. 
And uh, so um, one of the things with the clone 95, the Dijon clone 95 is it tends to have a little more concentrated fruit. That's why we like it so much. And so Water Creek is a great place to be growing Chardonnay because it's a little bit cooler. Some of you guys that have been on some of these uh, uh, virtual tastings before, we've talked a lot about uh, Stillwater Creek and we had Ed Kelly here, the vineyard manager a couple weeks ago, uh, sharing with us all his great knowledge, <laughs> just a touch of his great knowledge. But uh, the reason why Stillwater Creek is cooler, it's right in the center of the state. And um, Stillwater Creek Vineyard is located in the middle of the Royal Slope. If you know where uh, Royal City is, the Royal Slope uh, is a southern sloping uh, slope from the top of the Frenchman Hills, which runs east-west, um, right in the center of the state. So if you were to, from Seattle, if you were to take I-90 eastbound and you cross the Columbia River at Vantage, uh, you would, once, right when you cross the uh, Columbia River, uh, the freeway goes north a little bit but anyway if you were just on the bridge if you were able to climb up onto the bluff you would climb right up onto the west end of the frenchman hill so that ridge runs east and west and then the whole slope is about 20 it's actually probably about 35 40 miles long and uh, about halfway through that slope you hit royal city and five miles due north of Royal City on top of the Frenchman Hills is where Stillwater Creek is. So what makes it cooler though is because a little fire hose effect from Snoqualmie Pass. So the Cascade Mountains protect Eastern Washington uh, from the Pacific Maritime fronts rolling in off the Pacific and across Western Washington where those fronts dump the most of their moisture. Uh, but then we have this low spot called Snoqualmie Pass, and some of that cool air is able to uh, escape over the low part there of Snoqualmie Pass. And when it comes over, it just aims directly at uh, the Royal Slope and Stillwater Creek Vineyard. So we get a little cooler temperatures there, uh, especially in the evenings, which is perfect for Chardonnay uh, versus the Wild Luke Slope, which is a little bit south of there. The next sloping formation to the south and uh, we get very hot temperatures there um, so um, that's why we really truly like this vineyard so much uh, for Chardonnay. So Chardonnay uh, for those um, it's when you drink Burgundy if you're drinking a white Burgundy chances are it's Chardonnay. Chablis it's Chablis is Chardonnay. Uh, so when you're drinking these French Burgundies or Chablis, uh, that's, that's what it is. And uh, Chardonnay is also one of the main components in uh, Champagne. And uh, so uh, it's, it, it's, like I say, it's a fun grape and we truly, truly enjoy working with it. So uh, traditionally what my style of Chardonnay is, is to, one, it's 100% uh, hand harvested. Um, but one thing I don't want like doing is letting it hang too long and getting overripe. When we, that happens, it loses a lot of its acidity. Chardonnay is known for quickly losing its Chardonnay. So cricking, cricking, picking uh, period is uh, extremely critical uh, when we pick it because we wait if it's really, if it's Warm out, say like in 2015, if we wait just an extra day or two, we can lose so much acid and then the wine is flabby. What we mean by flabby, it just kind of lays on your palate and there's not a whole lot of exciting adventure going on from the standpoint that uh, acid adds um, vitality and a liveliness uh, to, to the wine. So, um, so picking is real critical. Uh, I I like picking a little bit on the early side so we don't get these big, heavy, cloying uh, Chardonnays. Um, again, I like showing off that acidity and a little more minerality in it. So, um, it, uh, it, and then also, um, you know, being malleable flavor wise, if we ferment it in 100% uh, new oak, it will 
uh, the oak will impart a lot of oak flavor to the wine and disguising that Chardonnay character. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with those styles. Those are just different styles of wine. So uh, Chardonnay, there's a lot of different styles to explore, and I mean a lot. So uh, if you come across one, you're not too crazy about the big buttery oaky Chardonnays, uh, well, then you can start looking more towards the leaner, uh, more mineral oriented and higher acid uh, Chardonnays of say stainless steel fermentation. Uh, so these three wines we're going to be tasting here tonight, we're going to get a little bit of both. So uh, that'll, that'll be fun. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, just the brief background on Chardonnay. First of all, does anybody have any questions about Chardonnay and, uh, and uh, that we can that I can answer right now just general questions of anything we've discussed so far yeah uh, we have one question um, how does Stillwater Creek Chardonnay differ than Walla Walla um, well the Chardonnays that I've had from uh, Walla Walla um, we haven't grown a lot, or I should say made wine from a lot of Walla Walla Chardonnay. Um, but I think that we do get, um, I think, a little bit of better uh, acid structure out of Stillwater Creek. Um, and um, overall, I just think uh, the Chardonnay that I've used before here, uh, we've gotten from uh, Birch Creek Vineyard, and um, so um, those soils have a little bit more uh, clay content to it uh, than the uh, soils of, uh, of the Royal Slope. The Royal Slope will have a little more uh, sand quartz type uh, uh, soils to it, and so uh, they have a little, little better draining soils, I think, drier feet. So, um, so anyways, mainly, I think mainly the acid profile that we get out of it. And again, it also depends on the vintage too. So. What about in terms of like picking and like harvest? Is there a, a difference with uh, the picking between the Water Creek and Walla Walla Chardonnay? Well, as far as the methodology goes, no, we, uh, we, all the fruit that we've ever worked with, it's always been 100% hand harvested. Um, but and it's fun to go like, out there too. It is so much fun to go out there and help harvest. Um, so, and it's uh, fun uh, <clears throat> rubbing shoulders uh, with the people that are harvesting and uh, getting up real early in the morning, sometimes a couple hours before uh, sunrise and being out there. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And we like uh, trying to pick the fruit, the Chardonnay early in the morning too, when it's temperatures are cold, that helps preserve the uh, aromatics in the fruit too. If we can harvest it when it's cold, when the fruit starts warming up, uh, we can start when it, um, and the fruit starts, is getting disturbed a little bit anyway, we start losing some of those aromatics out of the fruit too. So it's important that we try to harvest it when the temperatures are cooler. So, so early morning harvest is good for Chardonnay. Maybe the question is more, um, is like, does the Stillwater Creek Chardonnay, do we harvest that um, a certain amount of weeks typically before the Walla Walla Chardonnay or is one? Well, you know what it is, I can't answer that to tell you the truth right now. I mean, it's been so long since I worked with any uh, Walla Walla Chardonnay. Um, I'm just trying to think. No, actually, to tell you the truth, um, at Birch Creek, I yeah, Birch Creek was was later. It was definitely a little bit later uh, than than uh, harvesting the the Stillwater Creek. So, is it normally like really hot during um, harvest here? It 
you know, it just depends on the, on the vintage itself. So, which I will get talking about, actually be talking about when we taste some of these wines. I'll tell a little bit about the different vintages and how they how they differ. Um, like um, the 2015, for instance, um, it actually might be a good segue getting into it. Uh, the 2015 Helix uh, Reserve Chardonnay, that was... I believe just about the earliest vintage we ever had, 2015 was a very hot vintage. And uh, that Chardonnay, you know, we, Stillwater Creek, I've harvested, we harvested that. Uh, let me see, I'm gonna have to look at my notes, but it was in August, like August 28th, actually August 29th is when we harvested that, uh, that fruit. And so, and I've harvested, uh, uh, Stillwater Creek Chardonnay in early October before, so that just gives you an idea how early things were in in May. I mean, in 2015. So, try to see if I have dates here for any of the other uh, ones that I have the harvest dates. I could go in and um, yeah. Um, so yeah, the. 2019, we harvested that on September 20th. So we're pushing, you know, four weeks difference. Uh, and that's just due to vintage variation more than anything else. So, so yeah. Okay. Any other questions there, Abby? I have one more before we jump into tasting. Um, okay. Why does French oak? um really change the flavor and feel of chardonnay so much compared to stainless steel um seems to impact it especially even more than like some red varietals well stainless steel is not going to impart any flavors uh, it's for the most part an inert material um but um no new french oak uh, it has lots of wood flavor to it. And um, remember earlier when I was talking about Chardonnay, I said that it's a delicate grape. A lot of people refer to it as a neutral grape. It's not, it's just that everything about it is subtle. Um, there's plenty of flavor in Chardonnay, especially like say the clone 95 that uh, we use. But, um, but it's easy to, it doesn't take a lot of exposure to wood to extract that wood flavor out of the barrels into the wine. And so at the far end of the uh, spectrum, uh, you'd have say Chardonnay, uh, which can, uh, it accepts and uh, oak imparts into it very easily. Versus say Cabernet Sauvignon, the oak still imparts into the wine for the most part just as easily. However, Cabernet Sauvignon has so much varietal character. You can put, and again, it depends on the vintage and the vineyard, uh, but uh, oftentimes it, uh, it's a it character is so intense that you can do 100, age it in 100% new oak, but yet that Cabernet Sauvignon character will still shine through and show itself. Where um, with Chardonnay, boy, you put too much on it, it's easily just to become oak tea. So, and you, you, the Chardonnay, we lose track of the Chardonnay. So we try not to let that happen. And then these wines, uh, hopefully I, you have these wines in front of you and you'll be able to experience that. You'll be able to see that, so. Okay. Anything else there, Abby? All right. Good deal. Well, we're going to move on then to, this is kind of fitting here, even though we're going to be doing our uh, Helix Reserve uh, 2015 Chardonnay from Stillwater Creek. I thought it'd be fitting to pour it into our old Reininger glass here. So you see the old scripted R versus Later on, we're gonna pour into our new logo glass, our new Reininger logo. So you see the five mountains up there above the Reininger. So anyway, a little, it's probably more fun for me than it is for you, but what the heck. <laughs> All right, let's get on here.
So, and also you can tell by looking at the wine, oftentimes uh, the more gold color that the wine has to it uh, can give you an idea of how much oak or if the, the wine has been aged in oak at all. So um, anyway, so this has a really nice uh, golden, light golden hue to it. And um, so this particular wine, uh, it spent, it was oak fermented and it spent nearly five years in a French puncheon. A puncheon is a 500 liter uh, oak barrel. So to give you an idea, a regular oak barrel, some people call them small oak barrels, are uh, 225 liters. So this is like 2.2 barrels. A uh, puncheon is like 2.2 of the regular barrels. Um, but what's important about that though, when you have a larger volume to it, you have a larger volume to surface area ratio so the surface area is what's important and the, how much and how quickly the oak is extracted into the wine. That's an important part of it. So the smaller barrels will actually impart the uh, oak flavor into wines quicker than a larger barrel. So the larger the barrels get, the uh, more subtle or the, uh, more slowly the uh, oak will be imparted into, into the wine. So. Um, but again, um, as I mentioned that uh, 2015 was a very, very hot vintage. It was just about the hottest vintage um, on, on record. And uh, so um, we had early spring. It just, uh, that's why uh, we harvested it early is that that was the first year that we'd harvested uh, before September. I'd never harvested anything before uh, September Fourth, I think, uh, before that. So, um, but uh, anyway, we had already harvested some other wines. Chardonnay wasn't the first wine that we harvested that year. So we, believe it or not, uh, harvested some Merlot out of Sagemore Vineyard uh, about a week earlier than that. So, or I should say than this. So anyway, if we get into this wine here, um, it's what's fun about it Going on in the nose, um, I can tell that it was a hot vintage. I'm getting a lot of pineapple and uh, star fruit, so more tropical type uh, 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 aromatics out of this. A little bit of uh, quince. I get a little bit of um, oak spice going on in there. And you're seeing a little bit of... Um, I don't know, lemon, lemon curd going on in there. Mm. You know, one of the things that really strikes me when I first taste this wine, one, even though this was in barrel and punching for almost five years, um, the oak isn't overwhelming it. Um, we still have uh chardonnay character happening in this so um but the other thing too is the acidity of this wine for such a hot vintage we would expect uh for that vintage uh to lose a lot of acidity so typically the warmer the vintage the less acid there will be in the fruit well um things ripened up so quickly in 2015 uh, there really wasn't any extra hang time whatsoever in the fruit. So I remember that vintage well is um, how striking it was, the, the wonderful acidity and how that vintage actually maintained uh, the the acid. So um, if we were to have a uh, vintage that um, was a really hot summer, but then the fall uh, cooled off, uh, you know, I, I would see perhaps a little bit uh, uh, if we, I should say, if we had to let this hang on and it was kind of moderate uh, uh, 
fall temperatures, I, I would expect to see a lot less acid in this, but um, this has real balanced, um, moderate acidity to it. So that was one of the things that was really fun and pleasing from a winemaker's point. It wasn't just the Chardonnay, but the Merlots, everything had this um, real brightness, I think, to the 2015 uh, vintage. So, but, uh, um, on the palate, again, I'm getting, it kind of mirrors the, the nose, getting some of that um, uh, star fruit and pineapple going on, lemon. I think they would even get a tiny bit of um, uh, pear going on in here, or apple. But um, yeah, and just a real fun little layer of it, just a hint of um, Caramel going, caramel going on in this, um, and that is imparted by the oak. So, um, so when we put wines through malolactic fermentation, which um, this guy did, we didn't intentionally put it through. We just let it uh, naturally occur, and uh, so. Malolactic fermentation will bring in this kind of, um, I get kind of a nice creamy mouthfeel texture to it. Um, but uh, uh, the malolactic, uh, like I say, well, it brings in a little bit of more uh, creamy aspect to it and um, um, can also impart kind of bring in almost sometimes a little bit of nuttiness. So when we age uh, wine this long in barrel and plus with the malolactic fermentation that it did go through, um, it has to me just a tiny, tiny bit of uh, nuttiness in, in the back of the palate. So. But it's not overwhelming at all. So, and that's um, really indicative of a nicely aged um, Chardonnay. So, I am really, truly, truly pleased with this wine. So, I hope uh, for those of you, if you don't have it in front of you, I certainly hope that you have a chance to try it. Come to the winery and pick some up and try, try it soon. So, all right. I well, have a question before we move into the next wine. Um, can you yes. talk a bit about like the story behind this since it's a brand new wine we released it um, June 2nd uh, we actually it was labeled on the third um, so we didn't ship it out to anybody um, until a couple of days later um, but just being this brand new small lot wine can you just tell a little bit about how it came to be yeah yeah um, we um, just want I want one we want to do something uh, fun fun for Helix um, but also play around the, for me it's a lot of about adventure in seeing um, one trying to learn about a particular wine we've never left the Chardonnay in barrel this long what we call extended uh, barrel maturation and uh, we wanted to play around with it and see okay how far can uh, can we drive it um, in just uh, to learn about it before um, we feel that uh, we shouldn't go any further? And um, I think we we kind of took it to the end. Uh, it still, I think, has this liveliness to it. And so, from my from my point of view, it's uh, kind of selfish on my part because I just really want to learn more about making wine and. Uh, the only way I can do that is to do it. And so uh, I know it's fun too to, uh, uh, to produce something too for this new uh, reserve cherry wood label. So having a reserve uh, wine under that too. So it's kind of a mix of, of driving forces anyway. So um, yeah, a lot of it's just having fun and trying to learn and uh, do do something new, new and different, and uh, I am I'm totally I'm so pleased with the results of this wine. It just, mm. yeah, it's it's fun. It's definitely a fun wine. Um, all right. Well, 
for the next one. We're going to be chasing the 2018 reserve CPR. So same vineyard, same fruit, uh, but it has not been in the barrel as long. This particular wine, we actually did not ferment in the barrel. We stainless steel fermented it, but uh, then put it put it to barrel. And uh, uh, so, but uh we uh, oh i know also the one thing i forgot to uh tell you about um the still water or the 2015 is that we did do that surely so what that means we left it on the yeast uh for a long time so after the fermentation is complete the yeast will settle down to the bottom of the barrel in what we call leaves and so uh we put it on leave it on the leaves and we'll stir the barrel up uh, when it's younger, be a couple times a week, and as the wine ages, we'll go to a week, and then a couple times a month, and so that helps um, add mouthfeel to the wine also. So um, with this wine, though, like say it was stainless steel fermented, and then we put it, uh, introduced it to barrel again. It was a, a French oak, uh, 500 liter punch in, and uh, the reason being, oh wow. Oh, gosh, that's so much fun. Um, anyway, uh, we're, we just want to be judicious about the how much oak that we get on there. So again, trying not to drown out or run over the character of the grape itself. So, so um, yeah, when I stuck my nose in this, I was getting almost like a white cherry kind of candy caramelized uh, aspect to it, something that I'd never really uh, noticed in the wine before. So it was really fun and intriguing to to uh, get that. You know, almost actually, you know, what also I get a little bit out of this too that I haven't really uh, noticed before. My daughter and I, we just uh, over the weekend, she we made some strawberry shortcake together, and so we went and picked the strawberries out of our backyard, but. Uh, it was a real fun the shortcake uh, was uh, something that she really wanted to make and uh, um, but there was the whipped cream actually was half uh, coconut milk too so so I was getting after working with that this weekend getting it just a tiny little uh, hit of coconut in there just real super mellow layer of coconut and coconut uh, is imparted by the wood so that comes that that comes from the oak itself. So um, again, the the color is similar on this, even though it wasn't in the barrel uh, nearly as long. So uh, this was in the barrel for uh, two years, just about two years. And um, yeah, I'm getting uh, some real nice tropical fruit, but also getting a uh, Quite a bit of like orchard blossom going on in this. Orchard fruits and a little more mineral, I think, than uh, I was getting out of uh, that 2015. And you can definitely tell this uh, on the nose. I can I can really tell the difference um, in age in this. So just from the nose, I can tell that that 2015. Um, has a little bit more, um, probably I expect is going to have a little bit more mouthfeel than um, than this 18, just simply by the character of the uh, of the nose on this. So I'm also get a tiny bit of sandalwood spice. Um, in the Northwest, we don't get a lot of sandalwood washing up on the beaches, but sandalwood. If you've ever um, smelled sandalwood, man, it's just it's really cool. Um, you can find it around um, uh, sometimes spice shops, but more, um, gosh, even hunting for candles, that sort of thing. <laughs> you, you might find sandalwood, but it's a really cool, uh, very aromatic, neat, uh, spicy character to it. So. Yeah. I get a tiny bit more spice 
with spice on this wine uh, than the 15. And um, hey, check the acidity level on this guy. Yeah, this has a little bit more acid to it. To me, there's just a little more liveliness to it than, than the 15. Again, I think the 15 had wonderful acidity because of um, uh, for how hot a vintage it was. But uh, uh, this Chardonnay, the 18 anyway, I'm really, really, truly liking the acidity. I'm, it's not a lot more acidity looking at my uh, tasting notes over here, or I should say technical notes on it. Um, it's also a little bit higher, um, I think it's a little higher alcohol on it. Um, it no, actually the alcohol is just it's a little higher in the 15. But um, anyway, so so anyway, um, with this wine, yeah, I'm getting uh, some nice uh, crispness out of it. With the acidity, um, I get a little um, kind of yellow apple, Granny Smith kind of thing going on with it. Um, sometimes I get a little bit of um, mango, hint, hints of banana. I can definitely tell just by the flavor profile on it that this is a cooler vintage anyway than that, than that 15. So getting a little bit more like say uh, pear, yellow apple happening, that mango. And the thing is, it's interesting though, I'm actually getting a little bit more minerality out of this guy, but uh, that's probably because it wasn't on oak as long as the 15. So to me, the minerality uh, the loaminess to it jumps out a little bit more on it. But again, the mouthfeel on this, the, the acid on this seems very focused to me. So uh, it, to me, this is also a real, real nice food wine too. So. Chuck, we have some people drinking the 2017 Reiniger Reserve Chardonnay um, as that um, uh -huh. just actually ran out of that in our tasting rooms. Um, how would you say that differs from both the CPR and the Helix? Um, the this, this 17, I think, was, um, it's really not all too different than the 18. Um, the 16 and 17 were definitely, those vintages were different. I think um, we have some, they both have real nice fruit intensity uh, to it. Um, I think the um, the 17 had um, uh, just a little bit uh, less acid, I believe, than the 18 does. Um, but um, I found actually, if my recollection is that they're actually pretty darn comparable. So um, I really, um, but I think I'm really enjoying the 18 here. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Um, I do remember um, uh, my first impressions of the 18. Um, I really, really, really uh, liking it and thinking that, boy, this is perhaps one of the you know nicer uh, reserve Chardonnays that uh, we've we've produced. So, but again, it all depends on you know where your palate is and uh, whether how much acidity that you like in the wine. And so, um, and this is more kind of a, a worldwide question. Um, but how much Chardonnay total production globally do you think is kind of oaked versus that stainless steel? Um, Oh gosh, you know, that is something that um, we're seeing a lot more stainless steel than we used to for oh, the 80s, 90s. The trend was definitely oaking. Um, so, uh, but now uh, this last decade, we're, the trend is uh, a lot more stainless steel. 
And uh, uh, again, it's it's fun when you people play around. Uh, just I think of uh, oak barrels like spice cabinets sometimes, and you know you discover a new spice. Um, uh, sometimes a different cooper has he uh, the cooper uh, has a, a unique method or something that brings out a certain character in in the barrels. Sometimes it's kind of fun and get a little uh, you can get a little anxious if you will and uh, a little rowdy if you can if I may by uh, putting too much of uh, of a good thing in it. And so I think that's what really happened, say, in the 80s and 90s. And uh, people were just going for these huge, big, buttery, oaky uh, Chardonnays and uh, and forgetting what Chardonnay, what the grape itself is all about. And uh, but, yeah, I see we see a lot more stainless steel these days. And so, again, that's one of the fun things about it's just not about grapes. It's also about styles of wine, too. So uh, not only find, you know, certain grapes that you like, but also play around, experiment with the different styles of wine that are out there. Because not only can we have uh, stainless steel fermented uh, and uh, oak fermented, but uh, we can have cement or uh, a stone. And uh, so and there's just so many different styles uh, in different ways of of making wine, and uh, so that's part of the fun part of exploring wine is checking out these styles and and what you like. And the fun thing about it too is as we as we age ourselves, our palate and um, our w what we like, what we're drawn to changes too as well. So so that's fun. I certainly see it for me as a winemaker. Um, so. Um, I had been, I started off making just really like making very soft red wines. And then I started falling more and more in love and being intrigued with tannins. And so I've been making my wines a little more tannin structure, but now I'm starting to go back a little more towards that softness. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, um, yeah. Anyway, just, just explore. That's, that's a great thing about wine lots to explore and since chardonnay has so many different types of expressions what is your favorite um style of chardonnay mm, you know i age burgundians chablis i you know um yeah mon rocher uh, yeah you get the minerality to it um they're very they don't put a lot of new oak on it, and uh, uh, but uh, it can be aged in oak, but uh, more neutral oak, and uh, uh, and the the mouthfeel, the acidity, and uh, that those are the I I truly truly love those wines. I love uh, stainless steel and just being able to uh, experience the grape itself and. Uh, uh, what Chardonnay is about, but I also like um, a little bit of aged oak in it too, as long as it doesn't overwhelm the wine. So it's all about letting the wine still be itself, you know, be letting the wine still be, you know, show off its grape, it's the character of its varietal. So. Um, okay, before we move into the stainless steel, I have a couple more oak questions for you. Okay. Um, so the a year ago, um, when we tasted the 2015 and the 2018 Chardonnay still in those French oak punchins, um, how did the wine taste then compare to how it's evolved now in the, uh, I guess, post bottle? You mean when we're back in the cellar tasting those wines? Like a year um, ago. Yeah. Um, one of the things, particularly with the 15, um, a year ago to me, it's still, it, the wine seems to, to be a little disjointed. And so um, I thought it was really important that, well, let's, 
let's uh, you know keep it in here and see if uh, we can round this out. See if a little extra time in the barrel will round that out. And it did. We were really pleasantly surprised. It, it came around, did what we what we wanted it to do. And I would even say the same thing for the 18. Um, that 15, uh, it was interesting because uh, it definitely had its up and down uh, periods. And so, um, and that's the nature of wine period uh, when we're aging it and cellaring it. But uh, yeah, a year ago, I would just definitely say that Chardonnay was a little disjointed. The acid seemed to be kind of over on one side and some of the oak was another side of the palate. And uh, um, so it just really needed to uh, come together a little bit more. So, um, so that's why we waited on that even more. So. Again, it's, it's all a learning process. So, and Do um, either of these wines have any new oak on it? Uh, yeah, actually, um, both of them were. So um, both of them were, and excuse me, no, the, the 15 actually was a one-year-old punchin uh, when we introduced it to it. Um, so in other words, it had Chardonnay in it for a year before that. Um, in the 18, though, that, that was a new oak. That was a new oak punch in barrel. So. Um, is the inverse relation between minerality and oak time a winemaking effect, or is that something else? Well, the oak can mask the minerality so it all just it um it you're gonna get a lot more mineral character you'll see it more in stainless steel fermentation than you will with uh something that's aged in oak and um but that's one of the things that i love about many of the burgundian wines is that um the producers that do it really well manage to not only have just a, this nice little nuance of oak in it, but the mouthfeel and the minerality to it and the, the grape character is still just exuding itself, just really shining. And um, so those are the wines that Burgundy's that I tru truly love. So, um, so yeah, but if you put 100% new oak on it and lots of it, um, yeah, it can, it can mask that minerality and hide it. So, so that's one of the points of uh, stainless steel is to really highlight that minerality. And is there a preferred serving temperature for oak Chardonnays versus something that's stainless steel? Yeah, generally speaking, I would serve oak Chardonnays. Uh, again, do, it depends on the degree, how much soak, but at a little warmer temperature than I would. Uh, oh, there we go, getting the sunshine here a little bit. Um, and uh, so, yeah, oak chardonnays you can serve a little warmer temperature. Stainless steel, I think uh, you can serve it uh, colder, a little colder temperature. Um, okay, great. Well, I think we're ready to go and um, taste that stainless steel then. All right, here we go. This is our 2019 Helix Chardonnay, Stillwater Creek. There we go, hopefully you can see that all right. And everybody, I tell you, gosh, look at that. <laughs> the sunshine. Um, you can see the sun's coming around the corner here. Um, but boy, I tell you, it's so nice to get a haircut. <laughs> Probably seen me in some of my past uh, virtual tastings, flicking the hair around a lot. So um, it's one thing I've learned about this uh, event that we've gone through is that uh, I think I'm done with trying to grow my hair out. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, so the 2019, 2019 uh, vintage, was um, it was a fun vintage, an interesting vintage in the sense that 
um, it started out really cold. Um, 2019, uh, we had snow on the ground through the first week of April here. So um, there was, uh, it was a real, real late start. And uh, so, uh, but it started out kind of, uh, well, obviously a cool vintage uh, or spring, but the summer temperatures though were really, really consistent. Um, I wouldn't call it, it, it extremely hot or searing uh, heat during the, the summer months, but it was very consistent. It was 85, 90 degrees. Uh, midway through June, July, all the way through August. And then uh, September came around and uh, things started cooling off, which, which was great uh, for the Chardonnay. It kind of uh, gave us ideal growing conditions anyway for Chardonnay. So, um, so when, if, if we have hot, warm temperatures during that ripening period, uh, so which is say the Beginning the third week of August through September, uh, we're if it's still really hot in September, we're going to be losing a lot of acid in the fruit. So um, this wine here uh, has uh, plenty of acid in it. So this has just about a gram more a gram more per liter uh, than the last wine uh, that we had. So this can be really crisp. Remember, I said the last one has some real nice crisp crispness to it um, this guy's gonna have even a, a, a lot more but um, anyway in the nose um, I'm getting some uh, the star fruit really kind of stands out to me and uh, I'm getting a like a bright young pineapple to it in it going on so you know you you pick a uh, or cut into a pineapple. Um, if it's a really ripe pineapple, it doesn't have a lot of acid. The fruit actually might even uh, have a deeper yellow, maybe even starting, you know, a tinge of brown going on in it. Um, where if you cut into a nice, fresh, uh, early ripe pineapple, it has tons of uh, acid to it. Well, that's kind of more the pineapple uh, flavors I'm getting out of this is younger ripe pineapple. Um, and again, I get lots of orchard blossoms. So around here, uh, Milton Freewater, you know, just south of Walla Walla, we have lots of uh, fruit trees, uh, apples, peaches, pears. And so uh, it's, it's fun uh, smelling those uh, white uh, orchard blossoms in the springtime. So I, I get some of that. When this wine, one thing that I've found with this wine, after a while, after it's been open for a while, um, it will actually, the nose will start uh, developing a little bit of honeysuckle in the nose too, so. Yeah. This um, definitely has um, more more acid to it. And I, I kind of wanted to finish off the night with this. It's almost uh, palate cleansing. Um, has quite a bit of actually almost lemon lemon character to it, lemongrass. So it's got some real nice citrus notes to it, and uh, a little bit of melon going on in there. And um, I even get some. Um, uh, like pear skin going on too. Definitely a nice refreshing. Uh, this is what I call a really good summer Chardonnay. Chardonnay, Chardonnay sometimes can be a better um, fall wine, um, but uh, um, with the amount of acid and crispness this has and uh, the mineral notes that it has in this. It's to me a very, very refreshing um, wine that will be good for the hot days of summer. So you might want to chill this one a little bit more than um, you normally would with a Chardonnay. But um, yeah, it, it, it's a fun one. 
So the alcohol on this too, just fishing it out. It's um, lower lower alcohols. That's one thing that uh, we've been uh, had to deal with, say over the last ten or fifteen years making wine, is that the sugar content is uh, the the bricks, which is a measure of sugar anyway. Is uh, they're we're getting higher bricks in the wine by the time the phenolics, which are the flavor compounds, by the time they all ripen up. So over the years, we've been seeing higher and higher alcohol. So, um, you know, 25, 30 years ago, a lot of alcohols were, you know, 13% was considered a high alcohol wine. Well, gosh, it's a lot of times these days, it's hard to make a wine that's um, under 14%. So, um, so it was really fun. I think this guy, I think it's uh, what, about 13.5%, if I recall on there so yeah it's 13.5 percent is the alcohol on this so again it's really fun lively wine um you know this goes great with um casual strawberries are out right now we've been out now every day we have a ton of raspberries at home so not only we've been picking the uh strawberries but uh, we're out there with the raspberries too and uh so those are just ripening so all this Nice uh, fruit salad with some raspberry, strawberry, some chev or something on it. Uh, gorgeous. This also grow would go. This is Chardonnay that would go really well with uh, shellfish too. So, so yeah. So there you have it. There are our three Chardonnays that we have available this year, and uh, so. I'm really pleased. We've never had, usually we only have one Chardonnay. Sometimes we might have a reserve Chardonnay, but it's it's a lot of fun to have uh, three different Chardonnays to, to offer you this year because uh, we're n known mo mostly for uh, our red wines. We don't make a lot of whites. And uh, so it's definitely a fun thing for me to be doing this. So, all right, do we have more questions? Yes. Um, so does acid content determine whether you will go oak or stainless with the Chardonnay? No, no, um, not, no, not at all. Um, uh, a lot of it, um, gosh, it's hard to, I'll always do stainless. I really, really believe in stainless because I believe in showing off the, uh, the Chardonnay grape. Um, but uh, I also enjoy doing a little bit of oak. So, um, but, the, but the acid, no, doesn't determine that at all. Um, if the wine does not, if I feel the vintage itself is not showing a lot of uh, Chardonnay character, um, then I, may, I might forego the oak, uh, doing a punch in of Chardonnay and the oak because Again, I want the character to uh, show, and so uh, if we have a vintage where the Chardonnay character is, uh, is not that intense, well, there's there's no point in putting the oak, putting it on oak in my estimation anyway, um, because I don't want to taste uh, make a wine that uh, tastes more like oak than than like Chardonnay. So that's. It's more, it's more of the intensity of the Chardonnay uh, flavor character itself that determines that. Is intensity the, the only thing that you look for that determines when the lots come in for like, this is gonna be the Helix stainless steel or? I would say so, yeah, yeah. If, again, if, if it, um, if we're gonna be overpowering the wine with oak, um I'm not gonna put it on I'm not gonna put it on oak. So so the whole point is being able to show off wine. The the oak should complement it. Um it shouldn't determine its you know overall flavor profile. It's there to complement it. Uh, now that we've tasted through all of them and we kind of talked about the different flavor profiles, could you just like in like a I guess, couple little instances, what are typical flavor profiles of a stainless steel Chardonnay 
and what are typical flavor profiles of an oak Chardonnay? Just to kind of wrap that up again. Sure. Well, you're, the flavor profiles are often going to be more determined by the, the vintage itself and the ripeness of, of the vintage and how, uh, how ripe the phenolics get. Um, but the difference between Chardonnay, uh, excuse me, between stainless steel and oak, the stainless steel is just going to show up. It's, it's not going to impart any flavor into it. So you're going to be getting 100% Chardonnay character on it. And it will also accentuate uh, the minerality from, from the vineyard. Um, where the oak, um, the oak is going to complement it. it. Will add a mouthfeel to it. Uh, the, with the wine being able to breathe uh, a little bit, the oak barrels actually are porous, so we, we get micro oxygenation in there, which we don't with stainless steel. Um, so it will develop a little more mouthfeel, uh, more complex, what we call secondary uh, uh, flavors that develop uh, through the barrel aging itself. Um, so, um, might get a little more complexity that way in the oak and, uh, through the oak, but a lot of it's mouthfeel and just the, the nuances. And, uh, again, it depends on how heavily you oak, oak the wine. Um, but, uh, it will definitely add, oak will add spice to it. It can add, uh, kind of caramel, uh, uh, type and nuttiness, uh, to, to the wine. Um, so, um, so yeah, yeah, that's, uh, uh, vanilla. It can add vanilla. Remember I was talking about the coconut aspect there. Um, so all, all those are, are oak flavors. Sometimes you might even get a little bit of, uh, uh, toastiness on it. Um, so, um, uh, from, from the oak itself. So, so the oak can, can, uh, impart a lot of different types of flavors and it depends on the toast level of it. What I found with um, with Chardonnays and whites, I, I like to go with a lighter toast. Uh, with the red wines, I'll go more with a medium, medium plus toast. Um, with Chardonnays, white wines, I'll go usually a light toast to uh, maybe a medium, medium toast on it. So, and they also, the toasting levels impart different types of flavors because the toasting of the barrels will caramelize sugars and lactones and all sorts of other compounds that are in the wood and uh, create different types of uh, flavors that will be imparted into the, into the wines. So, so uh, what toasting level of oak really determine, you know, it, it has a lot to do with it too. So, what are your um, aging suggestions for all three of these wines? My aging suggestions? Um, I would be going on the two thousand. I wouldn't like the two thousand fifteen. I wouldn't keep it around too long. Um, it may be able to. To um, I don't see anything. Um, weak or break uh, anything in it to suggest that it's weak and breaking down at the moment but uh because we've never made anything this old i would say i wouldn't sell it more than a year or two i'd, I'd get in there um at 2018 i think you could uh, uh sell it for three or four years if you wanted to um and the 19 i would I would just drink them. <laughs> so the 19, yeah, I would, I'd just go ahead and drink them. I wouldn't hang on to it more than, you know, a year or two. Um, you certainly can, but to me, the fun part of it is, is the crispness and the youthfulness of that wine. That, that's the more intriguing thing for me on that. Do you have any future Chardonnay projects? Mm, well, we have some, yeah, we have a little bit of uh, Chardonnay aging and punching still. And uh, so um, you'll see more of this, uh, these type of wines coming down the uh, pipeline here. So um, 
so yeah, we'll be definitely be more CPR uh, reserve here. So the Helix, that was just kind of a fun project. Um, we'll see how this one goes and uh, perhaps in the near future, in another couple of years, we might, uh, we might go down that road again too, so. In our lineup of the, the few white wines we produce, is Chardonnay our go-to, or do you think there's a different white wine we produce that provides like more for us as a winery, or maybe makes us more unique? Oh, you know, um, it. Um, I used to think we were going there with the Viognier, but Viognier, there's so much vintage variation with Viognier. I, I love Viognier. When we get a great Viognier vintage, uh, you know, it's it's a fun, fun wine, but um, it's, uh, the vintages seem to vary a lot with that. Um, I really, you know, I, I love the Semillon. This, the Semillon's a fun wine, um, so I put it right there. I don't think Semillon gets enough credit um, in the world. Uh, I think it deserves a lot more uh, credit and uh, to be looking at uh, than than it gets. So I would say, uh, well, in my mind anyway, I, I really I really love uh, the Semillon.